Hi everyone. I'm back again. This is Miss Sandra and I'm here to talk to you about another door. Lately, the last three weeks, we've been talking about the different kinds of doors that we might read about in the Bible. We said that doors have real purposes, like keeping us safe, like keeping us healthy, keeping us together, helping to keep our things inside. Doors are used to protect us, to keep us safe. Doors have all kinds of purposes. And we talked about three doors so far. Remember, we talked about the uh, door on the ark. We talked about how God told Noah how to build that ark, and he told Noah how to build that door. And there was one and only one door to get into the ark to be safe and to come out when God told him to. One and only one door. Kind of like Jesus is our one and only uh, one Savior. The second door we talked about um, was the Passover door. And if you look behind me, you see an example of that. Remember, um, um, Moses was wanting to bring all of his people out of captivity in, in Egypt. They were slaves. They were not being treated well. And God told him it's time to leave, but the Pharaoh wouldn't let him leave. There were many plagues. There were many catastrophes. And finally, God said to Moses, you tell the Pharaoh that you are leaving Egypt. And if he doesn't let you go, the firstborn of every family, the first son born in every family would die. And then he told Moses this, but not you, but not you and your people. He told them to put the blood of a lamb around the top of the door and the sides of the door. And he said, when the time is right, I'm going to pass over this whole land. And when I see the blood around the door, I'm not going to harm the people inside. I'm going to pass over them. That's why it's called the Passover. I'm going to pass over them. But everyone else, the firstborn son would die. And it happened just that way. And you know that the Pharaoh came to Moses and said, get out of here. Take all your people, take all your animals, take everything you have, and we'll even share more with you, but get out of here. And Moses was able to take um, his family and God's people out of Egypt. That was, that was the Passover door. And then we talked about the temple door. The temple, remember, is kind of like the church. It's not exactly like our church at all. But within the temple, there was a small, smaller room and they called it the Holy of, Holy of Holies. And that was the place where one person, the high priest, could pass through and there could meet with God and pray for the people and ask forgiveness for their sins. Well, it was like a huge curtain. It was very tall, it was very beautiful, but only that one person could pass through. And on the night that Jesus died, on the night that he was hanging on the cross and he died, something happened in the temple and something happened to that curtain. The very moment when Jesus died, when he had, was not alive anymore, the curtain started to tear at the top. And that curtain tore all the way down to the bottom, which is really remarkable because it was a very, very high, thick curtain, but it tore all the way down to the bottom until it was opened. And that reminds us of Jesus. That was a way of saying, no more do people have to stay away from where God is. No more does that have to happen because you see, we have Jesus now. And when we accept Jesus as our savior, he looks on us, God looks on us as perfect people. We'll, we cannot be perfect on our own ever. But when Jesus comes to us and we accept him, our sins are erased. And God welcomes us to his throne. That is pretty amazing, I think. That's the temple door, which was actually probably a curtain. And to in today's lesson, we're going to see another um, door, and it's in John 10. And in John 10, Jesus calls himself the gate or the good shepherd. The gate or the good shepherd. And so what I want to talk about just a little, little bit about what it looked like the tending of sheep back then. You would have a big sheepfold. Sheepfold. It would be like a pen. It would be like a big fence around an area and the sheep would have to stay inside. Maybe that fence was built from rocks. Maybe that fence was built from thorny brushes, but the sheep would stay inside. And the sheep didn't have to belong to one shepherd. 
There might be one or two or three or four groups of sheep with different shepherds that would care for the sheep there. It had one gate that you could get in. And sometimes it was a gate. Uh, sometimes the shepherd or a gatekeeper would sit there and keep all the sheep in. They wanted the sheep to stay in that safe place until the shepherd was ready to take them out for food, to, to find food and water. Now, I read a little bit about sheep. And some things to know about sheep is this. They're not very smart. They're just not. They're defenseless against a predator. If a lion, if a coyote, if a wolf, if some kind of animal approaches them, sheep can't run fast to get away, and sheep can't fight back. They need a shepherd to save them. Sheep are afraid of running water, like in a river or in a stream. They won't go near it. They can't swim. They could drown. They won't go near it. They only want to drink water that's still, still water that's not moving. And the shepherd has to find that for them, or they will die of thirst. They will not drink that running water. They're also good at, or not good, at not being able to get up if they fall down. So if another sheep bumps them and they fall down, or if they somehow trips, if some way they get stuck on their backs, they can't get up. And then they are very prone to get attacked, eaten, injured, by a predator because they can't get up and get away. A sheep need a shepherd to keep them up on their feet and moving. Also, this is interesting about sheep, is that um, they have to be led to where the food is, to green pastures. A pasture is like a, a big piece of land with lots of grass in it. So if a sheep begins eating grass in a green place, when, it's, when he's eaten it all up and there's no more left, it begins, the sheep will begin to eat the roots. They will destroy that pasture so it can never grow green grass again. So the shepherd has to watch, and when the green is gone and the sheep have eaten it, they have to move to another pasture. So next spring, more grass can grow in that spot and they can come back there. If the shepherd does not do that, there will come a time when there is no green grass, no food anywhere for the sheep to eat. Sheep need a shepherd. Now, Jesus said that I am the door or I am the gate. When we talk about him being the door, what he's saying is, when I go to that sheepfold, when I go to that sheepfold, I am the door for my sheep to come out. When my sheep see me, hear me, know my voice, my sheep will come to me and we will lead through that doorway. Did you know that sheep learn and know their master's voice, the shepherd's voice, and that's who they go to. And Jesus is saying we should be like that. We should hear Jesus and go and do uh, the things he would have us to do. Jesus also said he is the good shepherd. I, I read that lots of times. He said, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd. Well, when you use the word the, that means one. I am the good shepherd means there's only one good shepherd for us. There's only one, the good shepherd. If it said, I am a good shepherd, a good shepherd, that would mean there may be lots of good shepherds and I'm one of them. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And just as a shepherd takes such good care of his sheep, Jesus takes good care of us. He says, we are like sheep. He says that we, once we belong to Jesus, when we hear him speaking, when we hear him talking, we recognize those are the words from God. Those are the words from him. We recognize and know that. Jesus said he's like a door, one and only door. And once we pass through that door, he's there to lead us and take us to right places. And here's what he said. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Now that means I will die for my sheep. Jesus said he would die for us. He would die for us. And he did. He died on that cross and he died for us. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Why did he do that? 
He did that so that we could see that he was truly the Son of God because he didn't stay dead. He died and then he was buried and then he rose again and he's alive now. And he wants to lead us and care for us. So how does that happen? How does he lead us and how does he care for us? How do we hear his voice? It, the story says, the words of Jesus say that my sheep hear my voice and they know me. How do we know that? Boys and girls, we have to read our Bible. Here's one right here. You have to read your Bible. And sometimes when you're a beginning reader, sometimes it's just too hard. Find the right Bible for you. Get your parents to help you find the right Bible. Or ask your parents to read to you about Jesus. That's how we hear from him. Also, we need to pray. That's how he hears from us. And that's how he responds to us. We need to pray. We need to be in a Bible love class or a Sunday school class or a small group somewhere where we have a leader who can teach us about Jesus so we know what the voice of Jesus sounds like. You know what happened to me the other day? I was coming to church and I always listen to um, praise music. And on this day, I thought, I don't know why, maybe Jesus was telling me this, I don't know. But I thought, I'm not going to listen to music today. I'm going to pray. But I don't know what to pray for, so I'm just going to be quiet and maybe God will tell me. And he did. I turned off the music. I just started driving and waiting. And then I knew that I needed to pray for my friend Pam. Her name just came up into my head. Pray for Pam. Well, Pam's daughter um, is having twin baby girls. Ooh, I prayed for the for Pam. I prayed for her daughter. I prayed for those twins to be safe and healthy. I felt like God wants me to pray for them now. And then I just waited, and the name Patty popped up in my head. Patty is my friend whose husband is very, very sick right now, and she's not able to leave the house um, at all. She just stays home and cares for him. So I prayed for him, and I prayed for, for Patty. And then I had kind of a sad feeling because I know a lot of people don't have a job right now. And that's not good when you need to buy food and you need to pay for your house and your gasoline and all that. So I said a prayer for all the people I know right now and those that I don't know that do not have a job right now because I felt like that's what God would have me to do. Sometimes when you get ready to pray, if you listen, wait and listen, God will say, this is what you need to do. And that's what I felt like. He wanted me to do that day. Boys and girls, Jesus is a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And he is going to care for us and lead us and teach us those things that we need to know. We don't have, we don't have to stand behind a curtain and wait for someone else to pray for us, wait for someone else to forgive us. Jesus said, I will do it. I will take care of you. I have already done that by by dying on the cross and coming back to life. I've already done it. He is the good shepherd and he is the gateway to his sheep. I love that. Now next week, you got it, another door. Come back and hear what it's about and let's pray. Hmm. Dear God, thank you so much for all these pictures that you give us of Jesus. Pictures that show Jesus is the one and only way to heaven. Pictures that show us that he will protect and save his people. He is God and he can do whatever, whatever it takes. Pictures that show us that we don't have to hide and wait for someone else to reach out and speak to you. But Jesus' death on the cross gave us the right to just speak up and pray to you and that you will hear us. You will answer our prayers. You will. You have said that you will do that, and you will. And we thank you so much that we have a shepherd, the good shepherd, the loving shepherd, the kind shepherd, who can teach us and keep us on the pathway that leads right to you. Thank you so much for all that you have given us and all that you intend to do with us in days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, y'all. Next week, another door. Can you believe it?